Hi folks, Bill of the North here, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the Bagnold Sun Compass. I've got a couple of working models here, and I'm going to show you how they work and possibly how you could use them for emergency navigation. There are several types of sun compasses, and this video is about the Bagnold Sun Compass, which was developed by a British Army officer named Ralph Bagnold in the 1920s. Bagnold was posted to Egypt in 1925. He, along with some companions, set out to see what they could do in the deserts of North Africa and where they could get to in motor vehicles. After a series of expeditions, Bagnold ended up becoming a serious desert explorer and one of the preeminent experts on travel and navigation in that environment. In 1940, with World War II underway and Egypt under imminent threat of invasion by the Italians, Bagnold founded and became the first commander of the Long Range Desert Group. The Bagnold Sun Compass was one of the main methods of navigating in the desert for the LRDG and many other units. As stated, the Sun Compass was developed for use in the desert and can be very accurate. On journeys where over 200 miles were often covered in a day, errors of less than 1% were not unusual. The Sun Compass should be adaptable for locations other than the desert where there is a lot of sunlight and long distances to be traversed in open terrain. Places like the Arctic or grassland steppes and plains come to mind. Because the Sun Compass requires direct sunlight for its function, it doesn't rely on magnetism and is not affected by metal like a magnetic compass can be, allowing it to be more accurate in vehicles. The Sun Compass is ideal for use in open top vehicles like Jeeps or possibly snowmobiles, bikes, dog sleds or whatever. Who knows, maybe it could even be used on a boat. The Sun Compass can save time and effort while traversing long distances since a person navigating with it, even using the method I'll be describing in this video, will not have to stop and check a magnetic bearing as often. Even though somewhat limited in its applications due to the need for sunlight, the concept of operation is simple. Once you understand how the Sun Compass works, you can easily make a working model for practice or emergency navigation from paper plates and a pencil, like this one, or from other materials. While mainly for use with the sun, it's also possible to use the sun compass at night if the moon is bright enough to cast a shadow. The basic working parts of the sun compass consist of the style or gnomon that casts a shadow, a shadow plate and azimuth scale that for simplicity I have combined on this model. Notice that the 360 degree graduations go around the dial in the opposite direction of a normal compass. An index or lubber line provides a reference point and a direction pointing disc. In order to navigate with the sun compass, you need some way to get an accurate azimuth of the sun. You probably aren't going to have navigation tables with you to calculate the true north azimuth of the sun. Instead, you can take a magnetic bearing to the sun with a magnetic compass and use that. For the purposes of this video, I used a magnetic compass aligned with the shadow cast by the gnomon to obtain my magnetic azimuth of the sun. I think this method is more accurate and less likely to result in sun damage to the eye than trying to take a bearing on the sun with a magnetic compass. Make sure to note the time you took the bearing. Once you have obtained your azimuth of the sun, you can calculate the sun's approximate azimuth for different times throughout the day. The apparent motion of the sun averages 15 degrees an hour, which is seven and a half degrees in 30 minutes and three and a quarter degrees in 15 minutes. As an example, using the azimuth of the sun at 10 a.m., you'll navigate with that number from 9.45 until 10.15 a.m. You'll have a small amount of error for the first 15 minutes, but the error of the second 15 minutes will average it out. For this demonstration, I'll assume that we are in a vehicle of some sort, although you can certainly practice without one. To use the sun compass, mount it on your vehicle in a location where it will receive direct light from the sun. The dashboard would be a good location. The device should be as plumb and level as possible and square to the vehicle. Be careful of being impaled by the gnomon in case of a sudden stop. The index line should be positioned towards the rear. 
The front of your compass faces the front of your vehicle. This will be your direction of travel. Set the approximate azimuth of the sun by lining up the index mark with the azimuth scale slash shadow plate. Next, set the pointing disc on the shadow plate to your desired course. For our purposes, we'll be using a 270 degree west bearing. Now, move your vehicle so that the shadow falls onto the arrow. You should now be facing 270 degrees. At this point, you can note a landmark in the distance and drive to it, or, if there are no landmarks, continue to drive, keeping the shadow on the arrow of the pointing disc. In a notebook or log, keep track of the distance and direction of travel, noting any change of direction. If you have to go around an obstacle, the shadow will point to the bearing of your deviation. Remember to adjust the azimuth of the sun every 15 to 30 minutes. You may need to stop and check it a few times to make sure you have it right and are rotating the azimuth scale in the proper direction. If you keep a log of your journey, you'll be able to trace your route and establish a very accurate estimated position once you stop. As previously mentioned, the sun compass is capable of extreme accuracy. Bagnold's expeditions often traveled hundreds of miles a day in unmapped territory. Each night they would fix their position using celestial navigation and often found that the estimated position obtained using the sun compass and log was within a mile of their astral fix. As a way of demonstrating the sun compass function, I put one of the models in a location where it could receive direct sunlight for several hours. I assumed a direction of travel of 270 degrees magnetic and periodically adjusted the azimuth scale to match the magnetic azimuth of the sun. In this montage, you'll note that while the sun moved and I adjusted the dial and pointing disc to keep pace, the direction of travel remained steady.